This is Adeline Siu, Editor of Pharmaceutical Technology Europe. Joining me today is Marvin Faber, Senior Director and Global Head of Environmental Health and Safety from Paytheon. Thank you for being here to talk with us about the manufacture of highly potent APIs. Cross-contamination with other products is an issue in a facility manufacturing multiple products. What steps should manufacturers take to prevent this problem? Yeah, I agree. Cross-contamination is, is an area that is you know a high focus area for a lot of companies. And I think your best solution for that is containing at the source. Now, understanding that sort of links to the, the question earlier about challenges, because that can be a very expensive prospect, but that really is the goal that you need to do. For example, if you are containing a product inside of a piece of equipment and preventing it to come become airborne in that production suite, that greatly reduces the probability of it getting out into the corridors and potentially um, impacting products down down the uh, down the hall. So uh, that that is your best approach is to try to do a contain at source kind of philosophy. Now, really, your best friend along with that is your industrial hygiene air monitoring data. So you know that's one I would highly encourage a lot of facilities to um, really make sure that their system is very robust. Because with this data, you can really determine what your next steps are. Say you get a new piece of equipment in the facility, you can do your, your air monitoring. You can either use the product you're making with or a surrogate. And the idea is to verify that you're getting to the OEL level requirements um, that are needed for this. And if not, then you can go back, do your acquired fixes, and re-monitor to make sure that you're there. And so that's a very valuable, powerful tool for you to use. And it's particularly powerful from a cross-contamination point of view if you're collecting air monitoring data out in the corridors. Because with that data, if you can show that it's non-detect in your corridor with a good sensitive method, then you know there's a very low risk of any cross-contamination occurring down the hall. So I would highly encourage that type of approach. You really need to have rigorous cleaning validation protocols. Uh, just to ensure that if there is any equipment going from one area to another or, you know, reuse of that equipment, um, it needs to be properly cleaned and validated in, in a very rigorous manner. Um, another sort of equipment design feature for this would be material and personal airlocks and making sure that they're interlocked. Because what you don't want to have is an entrance into a suite where both doors are potentially open at the same time. That's going to um, prevent uh, or sort of maybe potentially encourage some contamination leaving the suite and going into the corridor. So you want to make sure that those are set up properly. And in that in that light and similar to uh, the previous response I was talking to, you want a close control of your material and personal flow. So you really want to kind of plan a one-way flow. You really do need clearly defined SOPs and procedural compliance. So you've got to make sure that your, your staff um, involved in those areas, your operators are fully engaged and uh, into these processes and are following them along. So the overall goal would be really to have no reliance on respiratory protection. Now, we would at Patheon still put them in respiratory protection, even if we were down below the 50% of the OEL target, strictly as a redundant measure. But your overall goal should be to try to contain it at the source and get your, um, um, in theory, down to where you would not need respiratory protection. Thank you for your insights. This is Adeline Siu, Editor of Pharmaceutical Technology Europe.